If you make being Asian your entire personality, is that good or bad? Let's talk about it. It's bad if you ask this older sister that made this Reddit post, younger generation of ABCs making being Asian their entire personality. But the internet is also asking, is this older sister just a little too whitewashed? Um, listen, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Smala Sauce at smalasauce.com. She says, has anyone noticed now that the younger generation of Asians have started making being Asian their entire personality? Listen, I think as Asians have become more popular, somehow there are ABCs who want to play into the aesthetic that comes with being Asian. I don't think my little sister understands what it means because, yeah, Sure, maybe I have a white boyfriend and I hang out with more white people, but my sister doesn't even speak Chinese and I know way more about the language and culture than her. She's being so shallow. Mm, guys, there's a debate in the comment section. Obviously, we don't personally know this person, but this is something that I've heard because now, you know, a lot of people are able to surround themselves around Asian things, Asian friends online, even if you don't live in an Asian area. So let's talk about it, David. Let's break it down. We got five main points, and then we're going to go through the comment section. First off, I want to acknowledge that even though I don't fully agree with the original poster, Andrew, what she's noticing is kind of true, right? If you're a kid, you can listen to Keshi. You can go drink boba. You can be in front of like 40 different discords and like Twitch streams that basically play into what? an Asian or Asian bubble world in the West? Yeah, listen, I heard, I, I read that this girl is not in America, but they are in the Western world. And I think that her little sister is essentially idealizing what I would describe is more as a California Asian American lifestyle. Are you talking about Korean pop culture, Japanese pop culture? Yeah. Maybe if she wants to get lit, Filipino or Vietnamese, more a little on the wild side culture. Yeah, and, and I think that where they're growing up right now, she's not around a lot of Asians. This is her way to do it. And also, here's the thing about Asian culture becoming more mainstream and and kind of like accessible to all different types of people is that there is also some shallowness that comes along with it. No longer are the days that you have to study the Confucian relics or learn all the tones or learn how to write Chinese characters in order to feel Asian now. It's true. Yeah. And you know what the funny thing is? This is actually like a classical like rift between like AZN pop culture and like, oh, I, maybe all my friends are white, but I know how to speak the language and I've studied the analects. But David, the way you put it is like, there's like your kind of what carnal dopamine and then there's the mental and spiritual side of things. To me, there's like three sides of humanism, right? Or, or just humanity, right? Let's just say this. I mean, there may be more if you're an expert in this field. To me, there's an intellectual side, a spiritual side, and a carnal man side, right? Your id and your ego. And I'm saying the older sister, she may be intellectually and possibly even, at least in her terms, spiritually Chinese, but her carnal side where she gets all her dopamine and fun may be with the West or white people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because they're living in Europe where her younger sister may be even theoretically less intellectually or less spiritually Asian or Chinese, but may be looking to get her carnal dopamine from Asian content. Yeah. So I'm saying that, isn't that interesting? That And you've seen this in America as well, Andrew. Even different siblings, both sisters, same family, same mother, father, end up getting a different split between, um, you know, like where they get their carnal dopamine, where they get their intellectual dopamine, and where they get their spiritual dopamine. Oh, yeah, definitely. You listen, I mean... Uh, I can even just say, for example, and we're going to get in the comment section, but like if she's the older sister, right, and she's the oldest kid, then she was born in China, came to Europe, and then like as a kid, she adapted so hard because she needed a fit in. It was almost a survival instinct. But now that they have a family and the internet is full of cool Asian stuff, literally what, what, cool what, Asian what, stuff. What? You can go on the internet and you can find cool Asian recipes, cool Asian people, hot Asian people, funny Asian people, interesting Asian people, TikTok right? TikTok is Asian. There's 50,000 right. right. meme pages so, you can belong to. So her sister, her little sister, doesn't need to... Um, adapt to the immediate environment for survival anymore because she has her online communities. Now, I think her little sister probably just has this like inside desire to maybe move somewhere, like maybe for college or after college, she wants to get a job somewhere else. Maybe- uh, At least London yeah. or Paris or something that's not as 
white as whatever part of Europe they're right, in. Right, right. Like, assuming she's not in Australia, which has a lot of Asians. She, they're obviously not in America. So I think what I'm saying is that I don't think it's that big of a deal, but this older sister uh, might be seeing it a certain way. Maybe it's like, oh, my sister's going to become this weak Asian person right. by surrounding herself around all these fluffy Asian culture and like, oh, she's going to be stuck in this Asian bubble and it's just not how you're going to operate in the future. Right. I think that her sister, who's older, like you said, who got forced to assimilate, is maybe making the read for their immediate fishbowl of like, oh, she won't be effective in the country or the city or the county or the district that we were born into. Mm -hmm. I'll say this. I mean, I guess for me, one thing that I want to tell people is that consumption of Asian culture to make you proud is great and uh, to provide you a self-identity. But one thing you do want to look into eventually, Andrew, is mm -hmm. more things that require discipline or production, right. not just consumption. Right. Consumption sometimes is like, I'm eating boba. I'm watching anime. I'm using Olzong or Uwu or you know what I mean? Whether these are uh, Koreaboo or Weaboo type terms. Mm. But where? what am I starting to do? So for example, Andrew, we have an older sister, not as into learning the Chinese language as me or you even, but I'm saying she was still a black belt in Taekwondo, mm. still knows how to cook Asian food. Mm. You know what I mean? Still. You, you know what I'm saying? Like these are you when you dedicate yourself to an Asian martial art, you're still being part of the Asian culture. Right, right, right. Yeah. So anyway, let's just get into the comments section. Somebody said, in my opinion, this is much healthier than those Asian people who wish or pretend they were some other race, which is usually white. Mm. Do you think, Andrew, ultimately this yeah, maybe her just only being in the consumption aspect is not ideal, but is it still better than wanting to be white? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I would say so, you know. I think Asian material is a lot better now, you know, than it was. Like, it's a lot. I don't want to say just better. I think it's, like, more diverse now. So it's more hitting you on all different levels. Asian music, Asian food, Asian movies, Asian content, everything. If you want to find hard Asian stuff, and I know a lot of Asian stuff is stereotyped as soft. There, That is even possible nowadays through so many different streaming services. Um, somebody said, man, can we just be happy that we're finally making some progress? Even though I agree that, yes, some of this consumption of Asian culture or pan-Asian culture is very shallow. Right, right, right. Yeah, I guess, yeah, you just got But what if you looked at it this way? It's like, in that given environment, what if the only option is to either consume or just fully assimilate? Because this, her little sister is born in Europe versus this girl, this older sister who was born in China. Once you're born in China, it's almost like you're kind of like stuck with the culture regardless whether you want it or not. Right, it's like, like it's insane. a part of you. Like you can try to run and embrace Conor McGregor all you want, but yeah. you you will never go far. Whereas, yeah, the the almost the sister that was born in Europe has to go back to it mm. to find some self a sense of self identity. Um, other people were like, "Why does every single race?" other than Asian not do this. Asians are the only people who are ashamed of their own family being in the Asian culture. Mm, yeah, it kind of sounds like that a little bit. I think that Asians are just so hyper feudalistic and taught to do what rises up the ladder. And anytime anybody in the family looks like they're doing something, even if it's embracing their own motherland origin culture, that looks like it'll make them less effective in the environment, people feel some sense of cringe about it. Because they're so dedicated to whatever will help them rise up the ladder. Right, right, right. Um, somebody said, Asia is ascended. She knows she's different because she is living in a white majority country. It's not uncommon. You see other minorities do this. They struggle with identity and indulge sometimes in excessive pride. Other people were talking about how Sicilians in America are always made fun of because they're like always like, yeah, I'm Italian. I'm the most Italian guy you ever seen in your life. And then they go to Italy and the Italians are like, who is it this? This is not an Italian. Yeah, maybe this younger sister is just going through her AZN pride days. Right. I think it's ultimately what she gets into, but unfortunately in that hyper homogenous culture that she might be have been born into in Europe, like she might not have the outlets to join Taekwondo or you know what I mean? Like enjoy like a IRL anime watch club. Mm. Or just go do something Asian. You know, consuming things is good, but you got to get into production mode too. Um, somebody said, you know what? This is why I feel so lucky to have been born in the Asian enclave in the SF Bay area. 
I never thought being Asian was a problem. And many people I grew up were proud of it. We had the cool kids like the Filipinos where there were all the B-boys DJing, doing graffiti with the import call car culture. And even quote unquote, the nerdy ABCs got respect as well. Mm. Um, other people said it might just be because she's Chinese because she does go on to say that um, her sister doesn't really like the Chinese language despite being Chinese because it doesn't seem as aesthetic as Korean or Japanese. Right, right, right. I guess, Andrew, what do you think about this outcome? Uh, even though this took place in Europe, this original post is like centered there within that context. This easily could have been in what? The Midwest, right? Yeah, dude. I mean, I think she's just acting like a teenage girl does when things are trendy. Yeah, you know, she's probably not... You know, Chinese culture currently, especially where Chinese stand in the West, is probably not right? as appealing as Japanese and Korean stuff is. And uh, that's unfortunate, but I still think it's better than nothing. I think it's better than her not being into Asian culture. You know, I think her, as long as she's into Korean and Japanese, it'll lead her into Chinese culture eventually to an extent. You know, maybe she'll never really... got to look back 500,000 years. Yeah. Japanese and Korean. Yeah. You know, so I think just uh, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I think this, it's like teenagers, especially Gen Z, when they want to be cool and they're looking for self-identity, they really are tied into like group think and group branding and group imaging. And that's what might lead her to this like sort of mishmash of like shallow things that are considered cool, keshi, you know, boba, internet slang memes and things like that, or hair, wild hairstyles that are mimicking their favorite pop stars from Asia. So it's like, I just think that, as individuals, it's important for us to like, like, like as individuals, we're the sun of our own life and everything else, our planets rotating around us. Right. Mm. And we just got to remember that, like, you know what I mean? We got to, that's how life is on a micro level, but on a macro scale, it is true. Like different galaxies and stuff like that are like ranked differently because at the end of the day, groups can accomplish a lot more than individuals can, but you need to be strong in the individual sense that teaches you how to even process your group ranking. But when you're young, sometimes you just think about the group ranking because you don't have a lot of self agency over your own uh, galaxy yet. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think. I always think that Asian siblings should help each other out and they should be aware. Let us know in the comment section below. Maybe, you know, you have your intellectual side, your spiritual side, your carnal dopamine driven side, and you and your siblings ended up uh, being attracted to different cultures to satisfy each one of those silos. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. I think this girl should just try to help her sister out instead of fighting her or looking down on her. But sometimes I know, you know, siblings, they don't have, you don't have to see the bigger picture either. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.